Of the 116 cars entered for the STP International Rally in Galway last weekend, only 59 finished. This was no indictment of the cars, but an indication of the testing 400 tortuous miles that were driven over the two days, Saturday and Sunday. Scrutiny on Friday proves the cars ready for the test and it proves the Galway Motor Club well prepared to cope with such an elaborate event. Scrutiny is a job for the expert. Matty McNamara tells what he's looking for. Just checking to make sure that, first of all, the car is in a perfect mechanical condition for road use. The next check we do then is on suspension and brakes, etc., to make sure that uh, they won't have any trouble of any sort regard to uh, the law. The third and final check we do is to see is the car eligible for the test that's been entered in. Number seven seed Mervyn Johnson from County Fermanagh is optimistic about his chances. Well, I hope the car sticks it. Anyway. Rosemary Carney looks as if she's off to a ball. In fact, she is, but as navigator for Eileen Joyce, she first of all has to collect her papers. After this, all is set for the start. Should be a good rally. If it was anything on last year. Right. Following that word of hope from Cattle Curley, Mayor Martin Dively sets the cars off on Saturday morning. They're away to face 400 miles of driving, 230 miles of which is flat out against the clock. Robert McBurney is the second car to leave the start ramp in Air Square. Galway's hopes are pinned on local expert and number three seat Mick Barry. His knowledge of Paddy Galway could be a great help. W.B. Yates lived in County Galway. Little did he think that one day rally cars would roar by his quiet haven in Thorbally Lee. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. stone walls there are the local sheep so much a part of the scenery here at peter's well there's a service hall where the cars are given a once over a top man like Cahill curly has a top service crew any troubles no trouble free so far kevin here trouble free so far what are you going to do now try and go quicker yes yeah, just a routine service brakes and oil water and one thing and another check in the back end the Connor Lillehan and Ronnie White have incidents which put them back on time. Mervyn Johnson has had a moment. Tell us what happened. Ronnie the brakes, my gun, and went through a gate and burst a tire. And I'd say we dropped about three minutes over it. Smith goes out following a spin at Francis Gap. Car 54 is abandoned with front end troubles. Mick Barry is out because of the same reasons, and Hugh Hewson of Malahide has the worst damaged car of all. About 80 and the left hand rear hub collapsed, and the car went, it rolled twice, and went down to over end once, and ended up in the ditch. There it is. We're going to do some more because the, the engine's gone as quick as ever. That's what collapsed in fact when it landed. At around 4 o'clock, Dennis McKeg crashes the Mini Cooper badly at Francis Gap. McKagan's co-driver are taken to hospital, but are released shortly afterwards. 
The rally continues. Carl Curley, the dairyman, is now almost three minutes ahead of corkman Billy Coleman. Ronnie White is third. Two cars out of the 116 original entry make it. Carl Curley and his co-driver Austin Fraser are one of the first to arrive, but they, like so many others, have had their worries in the last hour. It's sort of a repeat of the Circuit of Ireland last year. We broke a throttle cable. And last year in the circuit, I had to get out underneath the bonnet and leave underneath the bonnet. And this year was uh, a repeat of last year's performance. I was lying underneath the bonnet and Austin, he was doing the steering and the braking and I was doing the accelerating. <laughs> the time to relax to get rid of tiredness and fatigue the highly tuned cars are rested in park ferme the drivers must retune for tomorrow it's back to the hotel where they naturally discuss with each other the day's tests i'm getting boiled here Joe. <laughs> <laughs> two of them two of them last second special feature of a very very dicey one there's a swimming pool as well as a sauna bath, and before bedtime, they sample that also. Curly is first on the road. Ahead lie 14 speed sections and 150 miles of driving. Territory changes somewhat. the rally men tackle a stage near Moy Cullen. Drivers are already surprised with today's conditions. Very rough, Michael. Very rough. It's a bit rough in places, but our car was going very well. Very rough. Go. 
Ronnie White doesn't start because of a damaged clutch on his Cooper S. Ashley Armstrong goes out with a broken suspension, and Cattle Curley is nursing his car after banging the sump on the first special section. Billy Coleman from Mill Street, now firmly set in second place, dents a wing, but he does not add up the ferocious pace. English visitor Barry Malkin is moving up the leaderboard, and Mervyn Johnson and John Bridges have taken over third and fourth places. On they go, not much time to watch the scene. So to the finish, the rally is over. Cal Curley with his navigator, Austin Fraser, bring the escort twin cam into first place. And they, like others, have a story to tell. Well, it wasn't too bad, really. You know, the first stage this morning was very rough, very bumpy and yumpy. And uh, unfortunately, we had to repeat it again later on in the day. And uh, the first time over it this morning, we knocked a cross member up against our sump. And the crankshaft wore a hole in our sump and we started to leak oil. And since then, we've done 14 stages and we've used 14 gallons of oil, a gallon of oil per stage. I had a fantastic run today. I only wish I had it in the same yesterday. What did the drivers think of Galway's first international rally? Well, if you go on to Belfast, uh, if you go on to Belfast, you know, it's only going to be a real good rally to be for Malish, you know. Tremendous rally, I think. Might be a little bit longer. But now the official results must be prepared. In a local hotel, a busy set of officials set to work, headed by the clerk of the course, Eamon Cotter. I'm very pleased, and uh, things went very well. Uh, marshals were all in their place. Chief marshals did their job. The Ulster Automobile Club timekeepers played a major part in the event. Paul Phelan here on the results, and Jim O'Brien, the girls. They all, everyone did everything properly. The results are ready by midnight, by which time the festivities are well advanced. To make the presentation, there's the Minister for Local Government, Robert Malloy. And he has a comforting word for the rally man. And I only want to say this to all you ralliers, to all you members of motor clubs, that there is this temptation to drive the car as fast as you can. I cannot but admire you because you have joined a motor club. And in the motor club, you organize your own rallies. And there you can establish conditions under which you can drive your car as fast as you can without interfering in any way with the safety of the ordinary road user. Mr. Malloy will pass on a check for 150 pounds to Kyle and Austin. Go ahead, Turn around. 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 Turn around